Hello and good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us for our dietetic internship webinar. My name is Emily James. I am an admissions advisor here at Bastyr University in Kenmore, Washington, and I primarily advise for all of our graduate of nutrition programs. And I am joined here today by Deborah Boutan, who is our chair of the Nutrition and Exercise Science Department, as well as our director for the dietetic internship. Throughout today's presentation, please feel free to enter any questions you have on the side of your screen. Those questions will automatically come to us at the end of the presentation, and we will do our absolute best to address as many as we can. If we cannot get to your questions today, we will personally follow up with you directly and to make sure those questions are answered. At the end of today's presentation, you will also receive an emailed copy of the recording as well as the PowerPoint that we have used. Without further ado, I would love to introduce Deborah Boutan to dive into our dietetic internship. Deborah? Thank you, Emily. Hello, everyone. I am very excited to share with you information about our program. Uh, I'm very proud to be the dietetic internship at Bastyr. I just, uh, we just graduated our uh, class that uh, ended their program last week and they're off already uh, competing for jobs in the market and getting ready to take their registration exam. So this is an exciting time for us and we can't wait to share more with you about the program. Uh, I have a career in nutrition that has been incredibly fulfilling. Uh, being a registered dietitian nutritionist has been an excellent choice for me. I've worked in a variety of settings before my academic career that included public health, long-term care, clinical work, food service management work, as well as consulting work. And every single job that I've ever had has been very, very, very meaningful. This has allowed me to be, I think, effective as a program director because I know exactly the skills and the strengths that, that individuals need to become effective registered dietitians, and it has helped me to plan and prepare this program. On a personal side, I am an absolute Bastyrian at heart. I love everything about nature, everything about food. Uh, I really enjoy uh, food at its finest. I love to cook. I love to pass that information on to, to our interns. Um, and it really is important for me to be uh, affiliated with an organization that focuses on whole foods, that focuses on the power of nature and nourishment. Uh, and it suits me very, very well to, to be affiliated with Bastyr University. So our goal today is to introduce you to the program and to identify characteristics of the successful applicant. We know that this is a very competitive process and we want you to have the information that you need to be effective as an applicant in this process. So Bastyr University uh, is unique. It began as a naturopathic medical school. It was the first accredited naturopathic medical school in the country. From there, uh, in its founding 40 years ago in 1978, it has grown to accept a variety of natural health paradigms and programs. And we offer programs in everything from nutrition and exercise science, to midwifery, to mental health counseling, acupuncture and oriental medicine, as well as naturopathic medicine. We are located in the middle of a state park here in Kenmore, Washington, which makes us definitely be able to practice our mind, body, nature perspectives. We have a beautiful garden here on campus um, and all of our students have the opportunity to completely commune with nature the minute they arrive. Our mission is to educate future leaders, and we take this seriously in the internship. We want our RDN alumni to be leaders. There is so much work to do in the field of food and nutrition, and we want them to have the skills and the, the strategies to step up and to take on those leadership roles. Within the internship, we also do, strive to support the mission of Fast Year, which is to recognize that healing power of nature and to know that mind, body, and spirit are inseparable that food choice matters in each of these arenas, and that we have to treat each individual client uh, as one, as a single entity, and connect their food relationship to them personally. Within the Department of Nutrition and Exercise Science, where this internship is housed, uh, this is our mission for our students. We want each of our students to really recognize the role that both food and activity play in creating whole person health, and also that every food choice that is made not only has an impact on that individual who is consuming it, but also that ripple effect of the food on their health then impacts their family, 
their community and the planet itself. So these concepts are incorporated into our internship. With that, we also want to be the leader in advancing this holistic perspective. And I can say with certainty that we have evidence that we are doing that. Our alumni of this internship are out in the world creating exactly the mission that we have set forth. They are helping others to learn how to nourish themselves through whole foods, and they're making exceptional changes in the world. So we know that our vision is a reality, and we look forward to inviting more individuals into our program to support that vision. So the unique aspect of this program and all of the programs within our nutrition department is that we do focus on whole foods. Uh, this may sound silly to some in that how could you have a nutrition department or a nutrition program that doesn't focus on food, but we know from what we've heard that there are programs in the world that focus on nutrients alone. And when you focus on nutrients, there's not always that capacity to communicate in the most effective way with others because obviously we all eat and food is the common form that we can best uh, relate to. So we really do focus the curriculum in this internship on whole foods. This is an example of a couple students working in our Whole Foods kitchen where our interns get to practice as well. With the use of Whole Foods, we do align with all of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics requirements. We are an accredited program with them, and we do have the absolute required program goals that they assign to us, which includes the fact that we must prepare entry-level competent dietitian nutritionists. That is our top priority, and we do everything to ensure that those competencies aligned by the Academy are present in our program and are demonstrated by our graduating interns. In addition, however, we do have a program goal that aligns with our program concentration, which is to make sure that our interns understand the role of integrative health care, that they know how to incorporate whole foods into whatever avenue they practice, that they do work with integrative medicine perspectives and consider the environment when they make their decisions that relate to food and nutrition care. As a requirement of our accreditors, um, I am always a, a required to say that all of our program outcomes data is available by me, through me, upon any request. So if you're interested in knowing what our program data outcomes are, please contact me directly. I do like to make sure that all our applicants know that our internship is much more alike every other internship in the country than it is different, however. Uh, some applicants have thought that we were all completely 100% doing naturopathic medicine with our dietetic interns, and that is absolutely not true. Uh, our program must meet all the competencies, all the requirements of our accreditors, and we do. In addition to that, though, we also have this concentration in natural medicine and whole foods, and so that is what makes us unique. These are the five competencies that are our concentration competencies. And so you'll see that here in C1, our interns are at our Bastyr Center for Natural Health, which is our university's teaching kitchen, or teaching clinic, I'm sorry. And there they are working beside naturopathic medicine students as well as acupuncture students, practicing nutrition with them in an integrative uh, setting. The interns are also creating a professional education event that target some form of integrative or natural health and providing that seminar to their, for their preceptors. They're consistently throughout all of their rotations, many of which are in Western allopathic traditional healthcare. They're also seeing where their natural medicine or whole foods perspectives may align and can be used to support patient care. And then they're consistently working with education with resources here at our university to support uh, science-based natural health and whole foods nutrition recommendations across all of their uh, rotations. So with that uh, backdrop, uh, here is more information about the process through which our application process begins and about the program itself. So I am open to meeting with prospective uh, applicants anytime up to February 15th or the application deadline for the spring that is set by the Academy. Uh, often I meet with people by phone, we can set up phone appointments, uh, email communication or in-person meetings. So I definitely am open to sharing more about uh, our program if you do not meet uh, the information that you need through this webinar. Uh, I do not meet with candidates during the decision period, however. So from February 15th through uh, the decision date, I do not meet with individuals who are actually applying for the program at that time, to be fair to all. 
We do use the national DICAS, the uh, centralized application system for dietetic internships, and we do use the D&D digital matching process. So all applications do go through those two national organizations, and we participate in them uh, through all their deadlines and all their formal procedures. We do have two small supplemental application materials that we request in addition. One of them is an online application that is for certificate and non-degree programs that, again, you can find at our website. Uh, it's a very simple two-sided two single-page application that you can complete uh, very quickly. And then there's also a $75 application fee that is paid at that time. I am happy to say that if you do come to campus for a Bastyr admission event, uh, that, we, that fee is waived and you do not have to pay it, which is always a bonus. The things that we are looking for in our application process is that we do accept a minimum GPA of 3.0. Uh, any GPA below that most likely will not be considered or screened, so we do encourage you to consider that GPA minimum um, as a pretty hard rule. We're looking for nutrition-related experience. We want applicants who are prepared to do an internship. So there's a, a really big step between learning nutrition book work and actually applying it. And so for those who have nutrition-related experience already, that gives us evidence that that individual is ready for that. We're looking for clinical experience in particular. So whether that's in hospitals or long-term care organizations, we're looking for some type of shadowing or uh, direct experience with ill patients, ill people. We're also looking for community nutrition to show that you can speak about normal nutrition to the general public and that you have experience feeling comfortable with that. And then the third category, of course, is food service. If you have institutional food service experience in the back of the house type of uh, experience, whether that's in catering or at your current institution and working in the cafeteria kitchen, uh, those are the areas we're looking for. We're also looking for three letters of recommendation as DICAST requires. And I always strongly encourage applicants to choose people who know you well. Last year, we had 130 applications for the program. Each applicant provided three letters of recommendation. So think about the fact that the screening team is looking at 390 recommendation letters. How will you stand out? You really want individuals to write your letters who know you well, who can give very specific examples of your successes and your strengths, and that really know you so they can really share uh, all, that, all that would be important in making a selection decision. The personal statement is also critically important. So we evaluate that both for writing quality as well as content. So definitely make a careful uh, reviews, make sure that your grammar, your punctuation, your spelling, your flow are, are well stated. And then also make sure that your content uh, describes you well. This is your opportunity to introduce yourself, to identify why you'd be a great applicant and a good person in the program, how you're ready for an internship, uh, so use those words wisely. I also advise people to stick to the thousand word recommended personal statement uh, boundaries. Uh, again, if someone's reading uh, over 100 applications, it does not always suit you well to go on for long periods of time. Conciseness is important. So I would recommend sticking to that uh, word limit if at all possible. Overall, uh, all of these apt aptitudes of the applicant are assessed and, and rated. And personally, we're just looking for the likelihood that this person can succeed and can really achieve the goals that the program has. Uh, anyone who meets these requirements is screened. There is a point system using a, a grading rubric. Um, and then those individuals with the top level of points are, they go forward and are given a, granted a telephone interview with the internship director and generally with some of the preceptors who help select our candidates. From there, the top candidates from that category, the scores are added to the original uh, scores and those names are then submitted to our Department of Nutrition and Exercise Science faculty for their review. So our process, we want it to be very multidimensional. Uh, we don't want it to just be the program director's decision making. We do want uh, it to be a broad scope of uh, looks at the candidates to make sure the process is fair. We do, of course, have a DPD program here at Bastyr University. So many of the applicants are our own students. Uh, and so we do want to be fair and all honor the individuals from other schools 
who are, are applying as well. And from that, we generally want to take 24 to 30 names for our 12 slots. Uh, this year, I did submit 30 different names um, who would have been excellent uh, candidates for our program out of the 130 original applications to get our match of 12. So that is our process. I'm happy to answer any questions that I didn't uh, fill for you uh, when we get to the question and answer period of this webinar. Um, at this point, we'll go forward and I'll talk about the internship year itself, what that looks like here in the Bastyr University program. So for any of the applicants who were matched with the program who did not previously attend Bastyr University, we have something called the Bastyr Intensive that is uh, scheduled the week before the program begins. That's a single day when we invite the person, to, the individuals to campus, we give them a tour, we give them a, a quick review of what our whole food nutrition philosophy means. Uh, we give them, guide them through a few case studies and talk about some of the aspects of natural health that they'll be hearing. And then we also have them spend some time at our teaching clinic and get uh, prepared and trained there, oriented to our EPIC medical record system so that they are ready to begin the program the next week. We have found this just to be a nice introductory way so that they are kind of on the same footing as any Bastyr students who are in the program and kind of know where they're going and what they're doing on that first day. Our program begins the same time as the rest of our academic year here at Bastyr, and that's always the last Monday of September. We are on a quarter system. And so we have a full-time two-week orientation in the internship that lasts, that goes Monday through Friday of the first two weeks, which generally then is the last week of September and the first week of October. And in that orientation, it's a time for the interns to get to know each other, to really develop relationships, to establish a safe learning environment. We really literally train the interns on what the expectations are, how to be an effective intern. We have some uh, field trips and have some guest speakers to introduce them to some of the areas, rotations that they'll be going to. They have some speakers come in on natural medicine. So we're fortunate here to have uh, you know, a doctor of acupuncture, a doctor of naturopathic medicine, a couple come in and talk about those medical perspectives so that they have some background there and know how it, uh, intern would work with them. So the orientation is really built to be a time of a, a strong foundation to give the interns a solid understanding of the expectations for the rest of the year. This is also when they get their rotation schedule um, and they'll know at that time their, their schedule for the rest of the entire academic year. Fall and winter quarters then beginning mid-October through March, the interns are generally in a Monday seminar on campus this is a class just for the interns, and it is held in seminar style, meaning that it really isn't a class per se, but it's more built upon a series of activities, active learning experiences, and guest speakers that support the interns in pre preparation for their rotations. Then Tuesday through Friday, they're out in their rotations at various sites in the area. Often these are one-to-one, -one, so one intern at a single site. There are a couple rotation sites that do accept two interns at a time, and those are always really positive. Interns love having a buddy to go along and share the experience, but the majority of rotations are one intern per site. We generally uh, have most in the fall, we have community nutrition and generally getting into some of the um, clinical rotations. Food service is generally winter quarter, and then clinical is a combination of winter and spring quarters. We do align the rotations in a progressive model uh, so that in the fall, the expectations are slightly lower as interns are getting practice and learning how to apply their skills. And then the criteria for uh, competency development exceeds uh, through the winter and spring quarter. In the spring quarter, the majority of interns are in a clinical rotation. This is generally 10 weeks at the same location at some facility learning clinical skills. And at that time, they are there 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday. And the interns meet once a month, either in the evening or on a weekend when it's convenient for everyone to have a seminar and to stay connected. The very last week of the internship, which is generally about the third week of June, the interns come back to campus for a full week. They do a final 
uh, clinical presentation, a professional presentation for their peers. They learn about taking the RD exam and they work through a series of professional paperwork, uh, profile, ending, get ready for uh, jobs, etc. So all of that ties into their final week. When interns are matched with the program, they are given a set of optional rotations. And what this means is that I simply have seven, six, maybe four opportunities for those areas, but not 12. And in that state, they are able to rate their interests. In this way, I am able to kind of guide and personalize the rotation schedule to make sure that people are following different career interests or, or uh, rotations that they're particularly interested in. We also have something called an enrichment rotation where interns are given a couple of weeks during the school year and they get to plan their own experience. So once they see their schedule, they realize where they're going and what opportunities they have. If there's other interests that have not been met, uh, we help them to find opportunities where they can practice those things. So they, uh, the, the rules are that they must develop a proposal based on learning objectives of areas of development that they want to pursue, and then we help them to find sites. Uh, this is not limited by geography. If someone wants to travel for these enrichment weeks, they're given the opportunity to do that. I also do consider where people live. Um, one thing I'm very honest about with applicants is that Seattle traffic is not pleasant. It's, a, it's very difficult driving in the Seattle area, and I know that it puts a lot of time and gas money in the lives of interns when they have to travel far for their rotations. Most of our rotations are as far south as Tacoma in Pierce County, as far north as Everett and beyond in uh, in uh, the county above us, and then the majority are in King County. But there are some wide ranges of geographical sites. Uh, and so we do want to be mindful of where people are living and do the best that I can so that they don't have to drive too far. But ultimately, I am responsible for developing the rotation schedule in a way that will be sure every intern meets the competencies required. Um, and I take that seriously and do it as mindfully as I can. <clears throat> These are some examples of some of the rotations. So all interns do three weeks in WIC. That's the Women, Infant, and Children Program in Public Health. We have a fantastic relationship with Public Health Seattle King County, uh, and our interns are able to go to a variety of different clinic sites um, for their public health rotation. Swedish Endocrine Center has been a very strong ally of our program for almost 20 years now. They provide a two-week diabetes rotation for every single intern. Of course, our interns do go to our Bastyr Center for Natural Health, which is our natural health rotation where they work beside naturopathic physician and acupuncture students and practitioners. And then Food Service Administration is in a variety of settings from our own dining commons here on campus to hospital food service, uh, long-term care and retirement community food service. We do some school districts. So there's a wide range of food service opportunities depending upon intern interests. And then, as I stated, the clinical rotation, some of these are in hospitals and some of these are in transitional care, high intensity care units. These are some of the quote unquote optional rotations that I indicated. These are opportunities that I do not have 12 of and that we can split between interns to make sure that they're meeting their competencies. <clears throat> so we have a, a relationship with three different renal dialysis organizations. Uh, there's an organization, it's actually an international organization here in the Seattle area called the Gluten Intolerance Group, uh, where students or interns get the practice of writing and contributing to a gluten-free organization. Um, there's several private practice opportunities, long-term care. We have a relationship with the University of Washington, working with the dietitians who work with their student athletes. We have three different options for an eating disorder treatment rotation. Brooke Diabetes is a, an artificial intelligence uh, startup that works with uh, diabetes management, self-management program. And then Lifelong Hunger Relief, we have a couple of opportunities to work with uh, international nutrition as well as local nutrition resources for individuals in need. In addition to the rotation schedule that each intern gets, each intern is also responsible for managing a group project. They are the lead on a project, and each of these is some type of, of educational event that they're planning. 
We do a corporate or I should say an employee wellness event series here in the fall for Bastyr employees. That's a cooking series educational event. We do, uh, we partner with Swedish medical centers to do six different cooking classes for the general public. They have teaching kitchens in a couple of their hospitals. And so we actually uh, are able to deliver nutrition and food, whole foods education to the public in this uh, format. And then there's also a published, uh, a public event for the preceptors that is a professional development seminar that the interns plan. So throughout the year, uh, interns are, are focused on these major intern projects that they have in addition to their rotations in an effort to help them to learn multitasking and leadership and group management. There are lots of evaluations built into the program to support interns in learning. Uh, obviously, the preceptors who are the dietitians or other professionals out in the rotations are consistently giving interns feedback both formally and informally. There are exit exams and uh, uh, regular exams throughout the program. Four different exams are included. They're all based upon the multiple choice that the registration exam is designed in to give interns the ability to start practicing for that big exam. Lots of peer evaluation occurs in this program. Again, the goal in orientation of setting up a program that is a safe learning environment allows interns to be each other's best evaluators. Um, and the goal there is just to learn group dynamics and to really be supportive of each other. And that's probably the most, some of the most important evaluation that happens here in this program. Also plenty of self-evaluation. And then each intern meets quarterly one-on-one -on -one with me as the director for an hour to go over all of their work for that prior quarter. Um, and so that allows me to make sure that they're staying on task and achieving all the required competencies. With that, as we're looking ahead to our successful candidates, I will say that each applicant is basically competing against all the others in the pool in that particular year. Again, we're trying to be as fair as possible to every candidate. Uh, we do not do uh, Skype or in-person interviews because it really is um, meant to make sure that those applying from the outside of best year have the same fair advantage as the students who are here. Um, we are seeking candidates who really will offer a very well-balanced application. So we are looking for all the things that I mentioned earlier that does, has been shown to, to provide the best and most uh, ready uh, applicant. The experience is really important. So I, I always encourage people to please get that experience. It does uh, really impact the ability for an intern to feel comfortable. If you've never worked with sick people, if you've never been in a hospital and seen the pumps and hear the sounds and the smells and the emotions that happen in a clinical setting, it can really be a deterrent to learning. And this is a very fast paced program with, with just, you have to stay on task. And so it's really critical just to be comfortable in a variety of environments so that you can understand the exposure in these settings and you can feel comfortable walking in and, and starting to learn. We're also looking for individuals who are adult, mature leader learners, who are team group, uh, group players, and, and as always, we're looking for potential leaders. Uh, we always say that this program is fast paced and we, we mean that sincerely and that the expectation is that individuals who come into the program already have a good strong command of their didactic knowledge. We don't spend a lot of time reviewing renal dialysis or reviewing cardiovascular diets or diabetes management. The expectation is that you prepare yourself and you jump into the rotation and carry out what you know from your book work. So we really are looking for people who are self-motivated and ready to go in that regard. Other attributes we're looking for, individuals who genuinely are eager and want to learn. Uh, internships can be very challenging times. And so individuals who are humble enough to just uh, recognize that this is gonna be a rough year and they're ready to jump in and, and do the best that they can. We're looking for people with strong work ethics who are ready to, again, multitask and to be recognizing that there will be a variety of jobs and, and different roles going on at one time, but they're ready to, to step in and take that on. We're looking for people who are confident, but not too confident. So there is a difference between being confident enough in your knowledge and your presence to jump in and take risks and try things, but not someone who's too confident who won't take feedback from others. So there is that fine balance there. We're looking for professionalism because every intern represents Bastyr. 
We can sever, consider every intern to be an ambassador for our university and our program. And the best thing that an intern can do is to be really mindful and respectful and to provide a, an ex, a very impressive um, time at a rotation so that the rotation site wants another best year intern next year. So we're looking for people who will really be ready to be that advocate for our organization. And then we're looking for people who are flexible because as uh, I shared, we have relationships with so many different organizations, but there things always happen. Preceptors move during the year. Um, preceptors have their babies early. Things happen, and every single year, someone who thought they were going to get a certain rotation, something happens and something changes. And it's my job to make sure that interns have an ability and a space to go to every single week but sometimes it's not the same as what was given to an intern on the first day of the internship. And so someone who's flexible and who knows that they can still learn from every opportunity um, and can move forward with that. These are some of the things that we're also looking for signs of in an application and in candidates. I mentioned that our program outcomes are available, but these are some of the strengths that we like to promote. Uh, we have a 97% first time pass rate of the registration exam. Our program has been in existence since 1995, and since that time, only five interns ever have not passed on the first try, so we're very proud of that. We are meeting all of our program goals for job placement. Uh, our interns do very well in getting jobs, and as I stated, uh, a couple of our interns who just finished the program last week are already interviewing uh, this week for jobs. One already has a, a full-time job, so it's, it's really quite exciting that they are able to find job quickly, jobs quickly. I'm very proud that our program has very strong and positive reputation within the Seattle community. We have so many fabulous community partners who support this program through their rotation sites and invite us back over and over and over again. In the Seattle area, there's just so many opportunities for interns to learn from amazing preceptors, and so that's definitely a strength of the program. Our unique emphasis on natural medicine and whole foods is definitely a strength. Again, it is not a 100% emphasis, but it is woven subliminally throughout the program, throughout all the other required competencies. The Monday seminar is also a strength. It's very important, in my opinion, to have an opportunity when interns can come together, they can be together, they can share their challenges, they can brainstorm together, they can be with others who understand what they're going through. So the Monday seminar is definitely a strength. And then our emphasis on building a team and on leadership development also I think is an important uh, strength of the program in allowing these interns to become leaders as registered dietitian nutritionists. These are some of the places where our graduates are working. So a wide range. Many interns come into the Bastyr internship having a dream of having their own integrative health clinic, not working in hospitals or clinical work. Um, and we do have some of our alumni who are doing just that. They are in their own integrative healthcare setting. They've got their private practice. It's very successful. But for the most part, many of them find out that they end up loving clinical dietetics or they love some of these other avenues they never, ever believed that they might be interested in. So throughout the realm of potential job opportunities that dietitians have, we have uh, alumni who are in almost all of those areas and we're very proud especially when they reach back and then want to be preceptors for the program that truly is a sign of our success um, and we're very very proud of having them placed throughout the country um, and especially here throughout the seattle area we always are trying to improve and some of the challenges that we do have as i stated is a dependence on the community as you may have noticed there's only one rotation that actually occurs here at bastier for all of our interns and that's at our bastier teaching clinic otherwise we're relying on about 65 different organizations for all of our rotations um, and so we are grateful that they are there um, but that is a challenge when sometimes uh, places close or individuals move around that can change the intern's opportunity for uh, rotation uh, experiences. We are at capacity, so 12 is the, the goal of the program. We've uh, grown to 12 and that's where we plan to stay for the, for the time being. Uh, we also acknowledge that internships are expensive and it's a full-time program so it can be difficult to work. Uh, we do have interns who do work on the evenings and weekends, and that's generally acceptable. Um, but it is also, it's important to note that because this is not a degree-granting program, 
traditional financial aid for students does not apply. So we support our interns with that by dividing the total tuition for the program into three equal payments. So you pay a third when the program starts at the end of September, a third the 1st of January, and then a third the 1st of April. And at least that helps to balance out that financial burden through the year. We also do have Baxter scholarships. And this year, again, three of our incoming uh, interns are getting quite substantial scholarships through our Baxter Scholarship Fund. So as soon as people are matched in April, we send out that application so that people can apply for that if they're interested. Throughout the year, there are also some uh, scholarship opportunities that come through from professional organizations, and I pass those on to the interns in the program as they arise. Overall, however, I believe that our program benefits far exceed our challenges. We have such a strong community of support here in the Seattle area, as well from our university and all the resources it provides to our interns, uh, that this is really, in my opinion, which is very biased, um, it's a very strong and very outstanding program of which we're very proud. I know that a few people who have contacted me have asked about our accreditation status based upon what's on the accreditation website. Uh, and so just to note that we are within our window of being re-accredited. Uh, our site visit was in February of this year. All our paperwork is in, and we are awaiting an, a January 2019 accreditation decision. Um, while we do not have any insight as to what that decision will be, we feel very confident that we will be re-accredited. Um, and so if anyone has any particular questions about that, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, but we, we are in the midst of a natural cycle um, and hope that we will uh, extend for the next seven years our accreditation cycle as has been uh, the norm for this program since it began. I would like to invite anyone uh, who is interested in coming to visit our campus for this great opportunity on August 11th. We have an, a campus wide open house where there are lots of events that day. It's on a Saturday, there are campus tours, there are opportunities to interact with current students. We have tables of information, uh, student presentations. It's a really great way to get a sense of who we are at last year. Um, and we often have uh, internship applicants come to this uh, and visit. I will be there at the table all day, sharing information and answering any questions. So you can register for this event now at our website. If you have any questions about it, you can contact either myself or our admission staff. Um, and this, again, is a great way to come and check out last year. I do provide all of the uh, information about our program. So if you do have additional questions, uh, my website, or I'm sorry, my email address and my phone number are here. Also listed here is the website where the internship information is found at the Bastier website, uh, where more information is listed. Uh, and I'm always, as I said earlier, happy to schedule phone appointments, in-person appointments, or to answer any questions that you have by email. So with that, I'm going to turn this back to Emily, and she's going to run by any questions that you have, and we'll get those answered for you. Emily? All right. Thank you so much, Deborah. That was very informational. Um, so just so you know, we are still taking questions. We have a couple here um, for us to jump into, so keep them coming as we go. So the first question that we have is, are there any rotations that you would see that would work? Emily, are you there? Yes. Can you not hear me? Hello, Deborah? All right. Well, while we're waiting for Emily to join us, uh, I will just continue on by sharing that uh, of the interns who are finishing up the program uh, last week. Uh, one of them has uh, chosen to be interviewed for a position with a long-term care facility. Uh, another is uh, potentially uh, gaining a job as a clinical dietitian. We have several who are interested in uh, uh, clinical work, and uh, one is really interested in working with eating disorders. Uh, so again, the range of opportunities are wide, uh, but all of them have a pretty strong sense of what they want to do, and many have been really surprised that now they have three or four different options that they feel they could do. Uh, so, so not limiting themselves to maybe what they thought they would do when they started the internship, but actually having identified several other possible areas for practice. 
Excuse me, Deborah. Uh, it sounds like uh, folks on the other end can hear Emily. Emily? Uh, but since you can't, I'm going to go ahead and step in here and ask some questions. Hello, everyone. My name's Chris. I work with Emily in the admissions office. Um, our first question here comes from Ashley. All it's, right. I'm uh, sorry. I'm not sure where Emily is right now. Uh, seems like we may be having a little bit of technical difficulties. So. Uh, Deborah, please hang tight and we'll see if we can get those questions answered. Sorry, everyone. It seems that we are having trouble having Deborah hear us. Give us just one second. Let's see, what other things can I tell you about the program while we're waiting for Emily? Uh, I would say that several of the interns do actually have jobs. So we have had some interns who, again, weekends are fairly free. And if you're one who uh, needs to work, I know I worked through my entire dietetic internship uh, 100 years ago. I actually worked at a restaurant uh, all weekend long. So most weekends uh, are free and interns have their schedule well in advance so they can make sure that they do uh, know when uh, if they have an evening event or something um, that they can um, they can they can plan for their job accordingly. Uh, otherwise, uh, all interns have all access to all the other Bastier uh, benefits as students. So they can use our library, all our electronic resources. Uh, as well as uh, just all the spaces here. So it looks like Emily is sending me some questions, so I'm going to uh, respond to those that I'm seeing here. There's one here about pediatric experience, so questioning if uh, there's any pediatric opportunities. Uh, we do partner with the Seattle uh, Children's Cancer or Seattle Children's Hospital, and they have their own six-week pediatric hospital rotation. So when interns are matched with our program, uh, we then give them the application for that rotation if they're interested, and they can apply there. Uh, if they are matched, then the last six weeks of the internship are kept open for them, and that is when they do that opportunity. We have had several of our interns uh, get that opportunity, and so that's been really great. Uh, international nutrition. So there is no study abroad. When I mentioned the international nutrition rotation, we have an organization in Seattle called PATH, and they do work internationally uh, with their, the work that they do uh, goes internationally. So our interns actually work with them here at their Seattle base, creating materials that are used internationally. And for the last several years now, the interns have developed materials for their human milk banking project that have been used in Turkey um, and across the world in creating safe environments for mothers to bank their milk that is then given to other uh, at-risk infants. So that is the international rotation opportunity that we currently have. However, we have had interns plan their enrichment opportunities um, in an international setting, and if they plan ahead, they are able to coordinate that with me. Uh, we had one intern several years ago spend two weeks in Central America working in diabetes care, uh, so that would be an opportunity, but there would need to be planning with me as the director in order to do that. There are no GRE requirements for the internship. Uh, none of our graduate programs here at Bastia require the GRE in our nutrition programs. Um, and so we do not require the GRE for the internship either. Uh, there's a question here about are the internships in Washington only? Um, and so, yes, we only have a dietetic internship at our Washington campus. We do not have an internship at our San Diego campus. Our current, we are currently accredited only at our Washington campus. Uh, and there's another question about is it possible to be concurrently enrolled at both the DI and the and a master's program. Uh, and no, it is not. We are a standalone internship. We are not a coordinated program, and our internship is a full-time program. So it currently would not work for an intern to be able to do the internship while also doing um, one of our master's programs. We have had individuals um, who have chosen to do the master's either before or after the internship, uh, but they could not be done at the same time. 
So please, uh, if you have questions, we still have a little bit of time, feel free to forward them to me and uh, they will be sent directly to me. I'm just making sure here that I have answered all that have come through so far. All right, so it sounds like we have answered all the questions that have come through. Again, I'll just remind you that if you do have any specific questions, um, feel free to contact me and I'm happy to, to share that information with you. It has been a privilege to have shared uh, more about our dietetic internship with you today. I hope that uh, all your questions have been answered and we'll look forward to your application if this is a program that sounds like it meets your needs. Thank you so much and have a great rest of the day.